everybody. Are you, are you guys ready back there or what? I'm ready. Are you ready? You're going to hush? All right. Yeah. Yeah. You Don't look Don't look at them. I'm looking at you guys that were, uh, yeah, right down there. Yeah. I saw you guys talking. When I say let's be in lecture, that's a sign to hush, hush up a little bit. All right. Sarp. Uh, tutoring, just to remind you to do that. There's a session tomorrow, 1030. Hopefully that goes good. Seely? It's engineering one, right? Second floor somewhere. Um, you know, this doesn't have the locations, but uh, they're all in the same place. Is that right? Is there other? And it's in web courses, in uh, 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 announcements, I think, or discussions. I put a blurb about that. Okay, we're going to do some clicking. Um, and we're going to take a lot of time with our pendulum data today. You know, I want to try to uh, find some patterns. The, the challenge for you was to look in your data to see if there was a pattern. And uh, that's what I want to do now. So, um, so look at your data for your group, all right? And everybody in the group, type in. I want you to type in the same number. So for every data that comes through on the scoreboard, there should be three people voting for it at least, or possibly two, or possibly four for you guys at the back table, the back table uh, gang back there, uh, and possibly one over here. Okay, two. All right, good. Uh, so here's the first question. And you can go ahead and start raw frequency BC. Type in the numeric part. So don't type in meters. Just type in something, point something, something for the shortest pendulum length that you got. And then hit the send key. No, it, I don't want it. Okay. It's got to be in something, point something, something meters. All right, so if you just typed in one, uh, better change it because that's that's no good. That can't be your shortest length. That's okay, good. Were you trying to uh, mess with my mind with that, or is this some kind of radical new numerical therapy? Okay, just just check it. Two. If you typed in 31, no. 31 meters is like, that's 100 feet. Nobody had that much string. Get it? Get it right. Can you guys do counts, please? Kendra, don't count your fruit. Would you? Yeah. 20 seconds to vote. Now, everybody's going to get correct and except for the person that typed in 31. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the data. Uh, where's my... Okay, here's the data, and wow, somebody had a really sh small one, zero point, that can't be right, it's a three millimeters, see, you see you guys what I'm talking about, you got to be careful with this stuff, 
you know, you're you're working at NASA or in a hospital or something. Somebody's dead because you typed in that number. Or you've crashed a multi-million dollar spacecraft on Mars. And they've done that. You know, back in the late 90s, somebody at Boeing typed in a, a velocity into the computer program in feet per second. And it was supposed to be meters per second. And by the time they got to Mars, the thing crashed. They never found it. You know, so that guy, whoever that guy, he was greased. He's probably working at Walmart or something by now. Anyways, so what do you got? 85. Uh, yeah. All right, so that's pretty close enough. So let's look at these data here. Let's see. Let's see if I can bring this down here. Come on, baby. See, now 31. I, I don't know what, and, and that's only one person typing it in. So you guys better get your, you know, look at this. The 30, I'm not going to ask what group that is, but you got some problems with entering your numbers. And don't forget, the, the clicker, you cannot type in, you can't start with a decimal point. So if you think you got a decimal point to start with, you don't, it won't let you. You have to type in zero and then a decimal point, all right? So let's look at these other numbers. So I'm going ign to ignore. There's that 5799 again. So it looks like, wow, two centimeters. That's awfully short. 0 0.02. But, well, it is what it is. Now, everybody's going to, and, and I'll even give you guys with the 31s um, correct answers on that. Now, we're going to have another one here. Uh, so that's the shortest length. Now, the pendulum length, it's the longest. That's what I want now in this question. So you guys with the 31s, don't mess up. You guys had the longest and the shortest. You had 31 meters and three centimeters. Oh my goodness. Whoever you were. Okay, much better. Let's see what we got here. Something, so it should be something, point something, something. Meters. Okay, five seconds to vote. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. If, if you don't have... A clicker today and you're not answering um, this is official this is affecting your grade now this is not bonus points this is a official action all right so let's take a look at the data here for the longest okay uh, one meter that's yeah 0.94 <coughs> excuse me uh, 0.95 0 0.45 it's kind of short but one point wow one point how did you do that who had 1.18 raise that that's you guys in the you got how did you do that you didn't just it must have been grazing the floor that one was it yeah okay yeah, that's, I didn't know that we would get up that high, but I, I'm glad you did. It's good. Well, the thing we want here, and all these numbers are going to be, all right, the, thir the 31 group who shall remain nameless uh, seem to have redeemed themselves with this data entry. Uh, the thing we want to do is have a, a good broad spread of data. Now, everybody, you know, there's going to be a lot of um, stuff in between. I don't know. What's the longest one here? 
1.21 seems to be the longest. Uh, but there's only one per. Is that you? Yeah, okay. See, I can identify who it is by the number of answers. Okay, so that's good. Now, we got another numeric entry. And this time, I want you to do the shortest pendulum period. Oops. Oops. Shortest pendulum period, please. This ought to be interesting. Oh, the period to see if everybody's. Well, we're gonna we're gonna see here in a minute if they mess this up. Okay, 10 seconds to uh, enter your data. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, 1.31. Uh, hey, you guys, was that for the, uh, one of the longer pendulums, for one of the longer pendulum lengths? You guys have typed in 1.31. Who, who had one? Is that you guys? Was that one of your longer uh, pendulums? Look at the data. Oh, wait a minute. This is shortest period. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good. I, I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah, so shortest period. Now look at this. There's nothing. Everything is fairly close to one except for this one over here. This might be a misfire. Uh, who's, well, I'm not going to, I won't ask. Is that you? That's not you. Okay. Okay. Because we got, this is you down here, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so somebody's typed in something. See, it might be this one here. This is what you got to do. And you guys, when you're doing real data, as we're going to be doing this morning, this is definitely something to worry about. Okay, next question. Type in the longest pendulum period. This should correspond to your longest Yeah, it's a it's an image of burnt toast, Steve, and it's it's uh, just random images, nothing. Yeah, and the first one was Gort from Dude. It's like a fifth. It's a classic. Just fifth, the day the Earth stood still. It's like a classic fifties sci-fi movie. You're slacking on me. You don't know that. Gort. Klaatu Barada Nikto. No? No? Yes? Classic movie. You got, you've got some filmic education ahead of you. So ask him about, ask him about uh, Klaatu Barada Nikto. See if your instructor knows it. In your film class. Okay, uh, five seconds to vote. Starting now. Four, three, two, one, zero. Um, as I was explaining to Steve, uh, when I have a slide that I, you know, I don't have a diagram for, I just put in, I just go into my big pictures file and drag out something that's completely random usually. So... You know, I just slide down the list and kind of click on something. If it looks good, I use it. So this is burnt toast. No, no particular significance to that. 
uh, especially since we haven't had the midterm yet. So, um, so now what we're going to do next, I want, you know, I've got all this data and, and it's good and I'll be looking at it as kind of a backup to what we're going to do now. Can you swap me over to the uh, left, to the uh, computer? Thank you. All right. I want you to go. I want everybody to uh, one person at least from every group to log into web courses. All right. And you can use the big, it might be better to use the computer in front of you, but if you have a laptop, don't use your phone though. Use the, use the, and one person from each group is enough. So use the, use the, the uh, desktop machine in front of you. You should be able to get into it. Or a laptop. But not a phone. Phone won't be good for typing in stuff. we got to type in some data. Can you guys go around? We're going to be entering data. Tyler, can you circulate? And you'll see what the data entry method we're going to use is. Just make sure everybody's logged into web courses. No, don't look at the. Okay, good. Don't look at that UCF video. Just good. Good. You're logging in now. Good. No, not Google. Log into. Unbelievable. Why did you have to Google to get into web courses? That tells me something. Yeah, the 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 uh, the address is webcourses.ucf.edu. Use your NID and your NID password. Quinn, Quinn, is everybody over here uh, in web courses? Hey, did I tell you to go in there? Steve, that screen, I see your, I didn't tell you to go in there yet. Give him a, give him a bing. All right, anyway, so, so now that almost everybody's in there, I guess, what I want you to do is go into discussions. Okay, and then go down. Mm, bonus pointage update. Let's check this first. Yeah, okay, good, nice. That was like two weeks ago. Uh, go down here to data entry pendulum measurements. All right. And what we're going to do is I want everybody to type. I want one person from each group to type in your entire list of length and period, all right, for each length pendulum that you measure. Also, I want you to, and it, so I want to, in commerce separated values, okay, so, so your length and then your period in to the, to the nearest hundred, and then in quote, double quotation marks, Put your group your group name. So this is like an imaginary group, the GFOs, and and I do that in the discussion. Just do that right now. Just take a minute and do that. So don't try don't try to do it on your phone. Do it on the laptop or a desktop. And I see, aha, uh -huh, Colby, Colby Hill, where are you? Very good. Arrow plus one. Okay, so Colby's looking good here. All right, so just take a look at what Colby's got. This ought to be interesting. Come on, baby.
All right. Let me pause the. Just did was. Ready? Uh, what we just did was the uh, data entry. Okay. And, uh, you know, we looked at some of the patterns. And definitely there's patterns. There's a pattern in there. Now, the numbers are get, are telling us now that there's some kind of a pattern to the numbers because you're getting these tight groupings along lines and curves and stuff, and we got to sort it out mentally. Now, the way that we're going to sort it out mentally is by looking at some constrained free fall systems. All right? And uh, let's, let's take a look at that right now. So swap me over to the 2D. I'm going to go to the document cam now. And, but we're recording into, oh, here's the, uh, here's the SARC uh, tutoring stuff. Ameris and Juan, two different sets of times. Engineering room one, engineering one, room 281. Is that a classroom or something or what? Is it, who's been up there? Is it a classroom? Small classroom. Okay. All right. Anyways, uh, this is all up inside web courses. And you guys, she left a, a stack of flyers up here, little tiny ones, if you want to get grab one. They're up here on the front table. Okay. Now, whoa. Oh, you know what? Uh, I have one more announcement. Uh, those of you guys that have written homework that you turned into me, they're not they're not finished grading yet. And so uh, so A through A through uh, F, you guys A through F. I've got and what I'll do is I'll photocopy your I'll grade I'll finish grading your paper. I'll photocopy it and I'll send it to you sometime tomorrow, so you have it over and it'll be a color photo not photocopy but uh, scan. Okay. And then you'll be able to study with that. And tomorrow we're going to have uh, homework three ready. Uh, so get yourself mentally ready for that. And we'll try to do this today. Can you give me a, uh, can you find a, a ruler from over there? Which one of these things has rulers in it? This one. Is that open? No. Here. Black key. There's a little, down at the bottom, there's a little clip. I need a plastic one. A plastic one. If there's a clear or a protractor. You can take it down. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, constrained gravitational systems. This is January 23rd, 2020. Okay. Uh, so constrained gravitational systems, let me pull this out a little bit, uh, and let's start with a simple one. Uh, we'll start with just a ramp, okay, and I'm going to, and we've, we've pretty much beat uh, ballistic trajectories to death. Hopefully you can see them in your sleep now, but let's do a ramp. It's not, it's not that fancy, but let me put on my specs. Uh, so what I'd like to do is a ramp, and I'm going to go 12 units to the right, 6, 8, 10, 12. I'm going to make it nice and big. And then five units high, no particular reason, just so it's, you know, so it's not a three, four, five or anything and not a 45 degree and it's not 30 degrees. It's 
some and let me use my ink pen make yourself a nice big triangle and this is going to be our ramp and the interesting thing is that Galileo studied you know the stuff that he was studying and trying to research was pretty basic stuff for us but in his time nobody had ever figured out the speeds of stuff on a ramp so let's call this angle theta the tilt angle all right now if you put an object up here if it's a frictionless ramp and you put an object up here like this it's going to slide down the ramp if it's if it starts from rest it's going to slide down the ramp so i'm going to give it a, a velocity arrow here down the ramp and it's going to get faster with time so let's make v a function of time all right now we know that uh, uh, v of t is uh, d by dt of the position all right so we better let's uh, introduce some axes now I'm going to introduce an axis along the ramp and I'm going to call it the S axis kind of a generic symbol so here's the S axis going out here all right and I'm going to mark that S and then I'm going to put the origin of the s-axis down here at the very bottom of the ramp, just for convenience purposes. You know, you could put it at the top of the ramp if you want, but I'm going to, so make your, your, and we'll call this the p-axis for perpendicular to the ramp. Okay. All right. And the, the reason for that is um, the direction along the ramp that's where the motion is constrained the the motion is going to it's not going to go free in free fall because it's on the ramp so the ramp is pushing back a little bit against free fall and but it's got some tilt so you're still going to get a little bit of downward uh force wow that graph looks nice there's a lot more we could do with the graph to make it look even nicer but uh, you can see I, I've all eyeballed a few guys up here and thought their graphs it looks nice. Anyway, so S and P. So really, um, uh, V of T is D by DT of S of T uh, times the S hat vector. So that's, you know. So that's like S X hat, or that's like X of T times the I hat vector, except we got this tilted axis S. So here's the vector form of that. And the thing is, we also know that it's equal to some acceleration um, down the ramp times time, plus whatever initial velocity you may have had. All right, so there's a couple different ways to look at the velocity here. Now, the problem is this acceleration is some magnitude A times the S hat vector. It's down the ramp. And so this magnitude here, that's the question we've got to try to figure out. All right. Now, it's a frictionless ramp. So I'll just write that up here, frictionless Galileo's mythical frictionless surface. And so the only thing that we're going to worry about is gravity and the force of the ramp on the, uh, on the block. Okay. So what that means is that now I'm going to go down a little bit, go down the paper a little bit, put another dot to represent this. This represents the center of mass of this block sliding down. All right, now we've got some acceleration due to gravity, and I'm going to make that a nice big vector here. Now, this is not the acceleration of the object itself. That's 9.8 meters per second squared in the uh, J hat direction. All right, now the problem is that we've got 
uh, acceleration from gravity, uh, but it's, it's constrained to the surface. So let's see if we can draw another version of this surface. Uh, so let's go down here. Uh, no, let's just try to draw something periodic. Wait a minute. I can do this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay. So here's my direction. Now, so here's here's the, my component of the acceleration is going to be somewhere along this line. So that line is parallel to the x-axis, all right? So my, my acceleration here is going to be along that line. And here's the tricky part. I only get acceleration along this axis if g is tilted a little bit with respect to the s-axis. In other words, if x-axis is tilted a little bit above horizontal. Now, if the x-axis were completely flat like this, okay, that's no ramp. That's just a flat surface, okay? And then gravity is downward like this. Let me do this. Okay, so gravity is downward like that. And there's nothing that can, you know, gravity is downward. The, your surface is, is uh, perpendicular to that. So there's no acceleration either up the ramp or down the ramp. It's because it's not a ramp, Okay. So what I want you to do now is draw a right, and this is the hard part, okay? I want you to go to the tip of the vector G, and hopefully it's not too small. I deliberately made mine pretty big, okay? And I want you to draw a line segment up to the this S-axis copy from the tip of the, accelerate from G, the tip of the G vector. So something like this, okay? All right, so I want a right angle right here, okay? And let's try to do that. And if it's too small, do it again. These are triangles that are going to be really, really tricky. They're tricky, but once you get them, you're, you're good, all right? Now, it's possible... For us now to say that G is composed of this much acceleration down the ramp and this much acceleration into the ramp. And I'll do this one in, dot, in a dotted line. Now, the thing about it is, it's a ramp, it's rigid, so I'll, put, I'll call this A perpendicular, okay? And I'll just call this A up here. And that's, that's this A up here, all right? Now, A perpendicular is what is, uh, is virtual. It's not really accelerating. And it's a virtual acceleration, or, or you could say um, it's absorbed by the rigidity uh, the rigidity uh, of the ramp. So this wouldn't work on a ramp made of water, liquid water. That doesn't have any rigidity. It would just go right through the surface. But if you have something good and stout, you know, that's ri fairly rigid, you know, whatever, you know, whatever tilt angle it is, you don't, it's rigid. So, so your object wants to go through the ramp. If you had, if you had a ramp of jello, it would dent in there. It would, you know, it would bloop into the jello a little bit. All right. And it would be, you know, perpendicular to the jello surface. And that's one of the, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't slide anywhere because, you know, it couldn't, it couldn't overcome the, the bloop. That's why people don't make ramps out of jello. You may not have known that, but now you know. Okay. But anyways, if you have a rigid material, 
this it's it's just you know, absorbed by the ramp, so you can ignore it. All right, but you you, you can't really ignore it um, completely because you you do need it to construct this triangle. Now here's the key. This sharp angle down here, if you think about it, has got to be theta. All right. And this one, here's the magnitude of this side. And it's, of course, it's downward. And here's A up here. So uh, if you if you want to figure out the magnitude of A, uh, let's see, A divided by uh, 9.8. I'll just I'll just write G as a as and we'll just think of it as a positive number for for this exercise. A over G or A over the absolute value of G. Uh, that's opposite over hypotenuse, so that's the sine of theta. Okay. So A itself, if you know the design of the ramp, and in this formula, G is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. You know, but in our, in our vector description down here, we have the minus signs in there. Okay. So now let's, let's take a look at this. Does it make sense? Does G sine theta make sense? You know, you can you can get all kinds of you can get all kinds of uh, formulas and stuff, uh, but you know if it's not Robert, if it's not um, if it doesn't make sense, you know that's you know then maybe you made a mistake somewhere. So let's see if this makes sense and if it makes kosher sense. All right, so let's say that theta equals zero. All right, and that means the ramp equals actually flat. It's not a ramp. And sine theta is equal to zero. So that means that A along the ramp is zero meters per second squared. And that looks good. If it's, if it's just, if it's a flat surface, it's not really a ramp. Ding, no acceleration. All right, so that's good. Now let's check. Let's check the other extreme value. Theta equals pi over two. Okay, and in this one, the ramp has become a wall. Okay, straight up and down. All right. Now sine theta at pi over two is equal to one. So, um, so that looks nice. Okay, so this is consistent with what our common sense will tell us uh, about, you know, what's happening on a ramp. All right. Now, I want to um, go to the next page. Okay, and I want to show you one more thing. Let me try to draw the same triangle. Okay, 12, 2, 4, 6, Ocho, 10, 12, and then 5 units up, 2, 4, 5. Okay. And I'm going to draw my, let's see if I can do this carefully here. Uh, I'm going to draw my S axis out past here. And actually, you can draw it out this way too if you want. And then I'm going to use my blue ink pen for the main part of the ramp. Okay. Here's the 
here so in blue here is the main part of the ramp okay and this is angle theta actually let's let's work that out theta is equal to the inverse tangent of uh, 5 over 12 what does that work out to so inverse tangent 5 divided by 12 so what do you get 22.6 degrees anybody verify me on that yeah okay so theta is uh, uh, not that it matters much, but you know, we may as well do it just for conversational purposes. Okay. Now let's put, let's assume that the the height of the object, let's assume that it's on, actually on the x-axis. So there's a couple ways that we could do this. Let me draw on the p-axis. This is s. Let me draw on the p-axis a little bit perpendicular to that. Okay, so here's my p-axis, and uh, of course the graph paper lines are x and y. So there's two different ways that you could express this position. So I'll call this b for the block. So the position of b can be written in two different sets of coordinates. Okay, x and y. Uh, or uh, s comma p. Okay. Now p is going to be equal to zero, and that's really our constraint. And uh, x and y are going to. You're going to have a mixture of x's and y's. So the 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 reason that the s and p axes are nice is because all the action. is in s in the x axis so that's a that's a statement in favor of it now the the reason that x and y are nice is that it's a gravitational system and gravity um, is in the y axis so we want to be able to kind of inter uh, communicate between those two pictures you know the ramp is nice but we we can't forget about gravity so let's get a little a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of principles here all right so the value of s let's say that let's say that this point it's the origin of the SP coordinate system and the XY system. So that'll be our origin for both. All right, and that'll make our trig a little bit easier. All right, so basically that means that this is the X axis here and that this, I'm just kind of drawing a little bit of it up here to keep the picture not cluttered. Here's your y-axis. Okay, but I'm going to try to keep this uncluttered down here. All right. Now, the, the x-coordinate here, uh, so this, this distance here is s. Draw that in. p is equal to 0. So we could write down s comma 0 right away. That's easy to do. All right, and that'll allow us to figure out x and y, because all we got to do then is just do this this little triangle right here, right in here. Uh, so so the x coordinate of of b um, is equal to uh, whatever s is. That's the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta. All right, and then y is s times the sine of theta. Okay, so that's nice. So now notice 
that the y value shows up in our acceleration okay and that is significant uh remember uh and i'll just write down here i'll write it in blue and ink uh, recall that the a uh, the acceleration along the x-axis is g times the sine of theta along the s-axis uh, so that's equal to so y is Uh, G times the sine of theta, sine of theta is Y over S. Okay. And so again, what we find here is that the combination GY shows up in the acceleration term. Okay, and that is significant because um, the potential energy is minus mgy. So that is not a coincidence, all right? So uh, on this problem, you can understand it in terms of accelerations, but you can also study it with kinetic energy and potential energy because it's, it's all in there. Okay, now we're not going to go any further with this analysis today uh, of this ramp, uh, but I, I'm going to give you uh, one more uh, system that we're going to start to study today. We'll probably dismiss a little early, it looks like. Okay, we've done a lot of work today. All of a sudden, everybody's happy. Nice. Good. That explains if that explains a few of those commas and spaces and decimal points. All right, let me make it. This is page two. One twenty-three. Twenty. All right. So page three. Let's go to page three. Constrained Did I give you permission to blab? No All right now the next gravitationally constrained system is one we already talked about the pendulum so let me draw a picture of, and we're going to hang this one from the ceiling, all right, instead of that dipsy clamp business. All right, so here's the ceiling up here. Okay, and I'm going to choose a dot right here in the middle to be the point of attachment of the uh, string. Now, I'm going to make a straight line, and I, I want you to do something similar. And I, I want your angle here to be fairly steep, okay? Don't make it all the way out here. I don't want a big swing. I want a fairly small swing, and there's a reason for that that we shall see, okay? So I'm going to draw my pendulum in, in red down to right here, okay? Now, from that same point, I'm going to drop a vertical perpendicular to the ceiling as a dotted line. Just for reference, a dashed line, okay? So that's the vertical. And of course, you're oscillating about the vertical. Steve, just as that trajectory was oscillating about, it wasn't oscillating, but it was maximized around 45. 
All right, now, I want you to go out in your diagram and let's put a, let's put a dot at the end here. Okay, so my dot is about three blocks out. I don't know what yours is. But I'm going to go three blocks to the right of the vertical at the same level here and put that in there. And now I'm going to draw um, a dotted red line to symbolize the other extreme of the motion. So let's just say that You know, you're doing your measurements and you just give it a small tug or a small push to the left or to the right. Okay. And now what I'm going to do in pencil is draw a straight line across between those two dots just for just for bookkeeping purposes. Okay, so there's my light pencil line okay and now comes the tricky part um, I want to draw an arc down here I'm going to draw it in pencil to represent the actual motion you know the motion isn't from side to side it's not along the x-axis or parallel to the x-axis it's close the closer oh let's let's do one more thing let's put the swing angle theta up here, all right. So theta is between the the string and the uh, what you call it, the vertical. All right. Now I'm going to try to actually measure this in millimeters. See if I can do a nice job. Boy, this thing's really worn out. Oh my goodness. This ruler needs to be replaced. Okay, so I've got about ten point three centimeters so let me go about 10.3 centimeters vertically downward okay and you can see that 10.3 i measured it out see this little this little horizontal blip here okay i'm going to put a dot there to represent the the minimum position vertically and now i'm going to draw i'm going to trace in an arc of a circle and it, between this point and this one over here okay boy that sucks let me do a better job it is nasty looking anyways let's see if i can do it a little bit better so it it comes in it's just part of the arc and try to make it symmetric. All right. Now I'm going to draw this. I'm going to cover over that in red now. Okay. So my sketching and pencil has done its job. Okay. So there's the actual travel. Okay. Now the length of the arc is equal to. Um, the length of the pendulum times 2 theta if theta is measured in radians. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, so whatever that arc is. Now, in my diagram, you can figure it out, but it doesn't really matter too much what it, what it is as long as it's fairly small. We don't want you know, these wild swings. Because, you know, if you get up here to like 45 degrees or something, then you're getting a lot, uh, you're, you're entering a range where uh, G has to be handled completely trigonometrically. And it's tricky. Okay. Because you're, see, the, the, the interesting thing here is um, theta is a function of time. Right. And uh, so now if you consider the position here, um, uh, 
uh, let's let's call this x comma y you know so we can make this the origin of the, of the coordinates if we want right there for x and y um, x and y are going to oscillate just because the pendulum oscillates right so x uh, will be x of t and it will be oscillatory Now that doesn't mean it's going to be sine and cosine of omega t or anything like that. You know, there's all, all different kinds of ways to uh, to make an oscillatory function, but it's going to oscillate even if it's not a perfect oscillator of, of the norm. You know, like a spring. Okay, but we at least we know it's going to be oscillatory. Okay. And why does it oscillate? Because of gravity. Good. Because of G equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And thank God, Tannis, that there's no such thing as horizontal gravity. Jan, what is your name again? You know, okay, you know. So who's Tannis? Who's Tannis? Okay. I was looking at you know, and I was and I said Tannis, but I knew it wasn't Tannis. So there's no such thing as horizontal gravity, but vertical gravity, yeah. And so now the thing is here, you're constrained to this circle. So the constraint is the circle of radius L. All right, so it's not a ramp. And one of the ways you can think of it is, is a bunch of different ramps for a short segment of time, but the angle of the ramp changing every instant of time. So it's a lot more complicated. But if you put if you if you try to take it apart in terms of ramps, yeah, you can do it. You know, so so that's one way to do it. We're gonna um, let me check my notes. I want to see if I if I want to add one more thing here before I let you guys loose. Oh, I didn't do that. that, 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 that. I didn't I didn't say to get going yet. We're not quite ready. All right. All right, let's just make one. Let's make one more addition. Um, here's my arc. And let's say that G Try to draw in, actually, this should be in red. So here's my red arc. Okay. And try to draw in carefully a tangent line at the same slope as the circle. Okay, so there's a tangent line. Now that I've got it traced in in pencil, let me just do it in ink so it shows up for the Instagram. Instagram is not friendly to pencils, I found out. Okay, so here's a tangent line. At, so it's tangent to the motion, just as the ramp problem was tangent to the motion. Matter of fact, um, the ramp problem, there was only one tangent. Okay, and the velocity vector, the tangent vector, it's, it's, it's all the same all through the motion. Here it's not, but you can at least draw it in here. All right. So that means that you have a little bit of, here's your G. Okay. Oops, I'm a little bit off the paper there. That's all right. So there's my G. 
Okay, negative 9.8 meters per second squared in the j-hat direction. So that means that here's the component here of the acceleration along the arc, along the path of motion. The problem is that this, so I'll, I'll just kind of highlight it here with little hatch marks, okay? That acceleration changes with theta. Okay, so that makes it a little more complex. All right, so it's, it's not quite, it, it's similar to the ramp in that we can draw components. All right, we can make a right triangle. The problem with it, with it the complication is, that the ramp keeps changing its tilt as you go along. So you go along for a millisecond, bing, you're at a different ramp, and it's getting less steep. And then when you pass, when you pass the low point here, the symmetry point of the motion, then you start getting to steeper and steeper ramps up to the right. And then you stop, and you turn around, and you get to less and less steep ramps as you're going back the other way and you just go back all the way up to the left again and you, know, you just keep repeating so this is a little more complicated uh but we're going to handle it and we'll handle it um can you switch me over to the uh laptop please we're going to handle it uh on tuesday so what i want you to do okay we just did our last thing if constrained free fall uh, so here's your homework. Homework three and PDF tomorrow. And web course is due Tuesday, as always. Uh, read and study uniform circular motion in chapter four, and we'll get to that, and we'll finish this this circular motion pendulum uh, on uh, on Tuesday. Do I want what? Uh, no, you keep those. I've got all your stuff in in the in the uh, discussion. So. Okay, um...